Hello and welcome to our program Where God Weeps, a program where we talk about the situation of the suffering church around the world. In recent years, northern Nigeria has seen a rising number of radical groups that have created tension, chaos and political instability in the region. Kaduna State is an area where conflicts between nomads and local tribal farmers are in the rise. Violent attacks have been perpetrated in the region by the Fulani herdsmen. To know more about the challenges that the Church faces in this region of Nigeria, it is my privilege to welcome Bishop Joseph Bagobiri from the Diocese of Kafachan in Kaduna State. Your Excellency, welcome to our program. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, where is your diocese? Where is it located in, in Nigeria? In the northwestern part of Nigeria, in Kaduna State, within the northern region. Uh, it also falls within the area that is described as the Middle Belt area. So it's really within the center of Nigeria as a country. Can you describe for us what, what are the conditions of, of uh, this region, of this territory, uh, of the country? Northern Nigeria and then uh, Kafanchan, where I come from, um, is a predominantly uh, Muslim area. Hausa is the language that is widely uh, spoken. Uh, among the people, and it is the language that is being used generally within uh, northern Nigeria. It's an agrarian society. Uh, most so of agriculture is, agricultural is very important area. for the economy. Yes. So there are mainly peasant farmers. The farming has not gone mechanized yet. And uh, they are able to farm enough for subsistence purposes and uh, other things like that. Uh, the diocese is mainly rural in nature. Uh, and uh, it also constitutes politically uh, one of the three senatorial districts that make up Kaduna State. That means in each state in Nigeria, you have three senatorial districts, and uh, within Kaduna State, we form uh, one of the senatorial districts in the southern part uh, of the state. Now, though the north generally is predominantly Muslim, but within Kafanchan itself, uh, Christians are in the majority. Uh, so, um, there is a good presence of Christians within that part of the north that uh, I am in. Your Excellency, I want to uh, jump right away into a very important topic mm -hmm. that will take most of our conversation, and it is the activities of the Fulani herdsmen. Um, can you explain us who are they? What is this, this group? They are nomads, that um, non-sedentary people uh, who look after cattle and um, they come in, stay for a while, uh, depending on the weather. And then after they will leave and migrate to some other places. Now, until recently, there have been a spirit of understanding between the natives and then these visiting nomads. Uh, but recently, that relationship has turned 
into something that uh, is not healthy. And uh, they come in and with sophisticated weapons and they have been able to attack many communities within Southern Kaduna, uh, in places like uh, in Jama local government area and in Kauri local government area. They have driven out entire communities uh, and they have been responsible for many other atrocities uh, that have taken place during their own attacks. As we have reported, um, between September and November, uh, there were serial attacks. Leading September and November of 2016. Yeah, yes. And uh, in the course of these attacks, up to five villages or communities were completely uh, emptied. Uh, there were people were killed and driven out. Those who survived could no longer stay in these very places. And, uh, the painful thing again is some of them, the Fulanis, have taken residence in some of these communities. So it's like they drove the people out and they have taken possession of their own land. Your Excellency, I have to interrupt you because this really doesn't. Mm, f fit the definition of a nomad, you know, and a peaceful uh, people dedicated to move around looking for better pastures for their cattle. You mentioned uh, sophisticated weaponry and, and to be able to, to make this kind of damage in villages, uh, they must have very powerful uh, weapons. What happened? I mean, what's supposed to be a, a group that I, I am assuming that for many years were in this dynamic of going around uh, the, the different territories looking for um, food for, for their cattle. What happened that they, they became this extremely violent group? Well, uh, if you look at people attribute many reasons to that. One of them is the desertification of uh, uh, the sub-Saharan environment. And it could be in the far north, um, the desert is encroaching very well, and the only place they find to be suitable for grazing their cattle and taking shelter for themselves is the environment in which we are in, which has a fairly reasonable uh, climate that allow for agricultural activities and things like that. Uh, so it, it will be they have migrated from some places and they are wanting to have some kind of uh, quasi-domicile within the places in which we are in. And nobody is really against them in doing this. But what we are saying, the use of violence to acquire by force uh, people's ancestral lands and things like that um, is not the best approach uh, in the generation or the world in which we are in. And what is the government doing, Your Excellency? This matter is always brought to government's uh, attention. Uh, it will seem government herself is uh, either not well equipped and prepared to face this challenge or government has some complexity in the whole thing. Uh, there are many people who suspect government of some complexity because those who are heading government today, both at the state and at the federal level, have affinities with these groups. What kind of affinities? They are of the same ethnic group. And so one would expect naturally that the kind of force with which they will use to stamp out this scotch may not be applied fully. Uh, but uh, uh, 
we are government is aware of these things, but despite the uh, incessant nature of these attacks, you hardly find that any arrest has been done or some people have been taken and are being penalized for such atrocities and crimes. Your Excellency, is religion part of the problem? Uh, your people being Christians, Catholics, and being the majority in, in this region, and the nomads mostly or completely being Muslims, uh, is there also um, a problem of uh, faiths? Definitely the attacks, one of the reasons is to frustrate the spread of Christianity, to frustrate the spread of the gospel. Uh, one cannot rule this out. Uh, but there may be other factors that could be social and economic. Uh, one will not rule them out. But uh, some of us believe that at the heart of all these things, is effort towards um, frustrating uh, the efforts in evangelization that is being made by the church because of the uh, phenomenal growth that is being seen to be taking place uh, within the church in the last 100 years. Uh, we have seen that the church has moved from almost a 0% uh, Christian presence uh, to almost 31, 32% of the entire population of northern Nigeria. And that does not go on well uh, with some people who feel threatened by the way in which the church is growing. So while we admit that there could be other factors uh, having to do with the size for grazing land, the size for a more suitable place to stay, uh, but the use of violence for that. Uh, while it could be a reason, but we believe that uh, religion is at the heart of whatever is happening. What is the reason why uh, Christianity has grown so much in this region, Your Excellency? I want to believe it's the success of uh, the work of missionaries, the success of uh, the church that has uh, risen up to the challenge of uh, uh, preaching the gospel and sharing the gospel. And uh, definitely this has helped the church to grow in stature and its impact is being felt uh, very strongly and uh, that in itself uh, is one of the reasons for the persecution that Christians are undergoing uh, today. Now the other thing will be the growing number of Christians, uh, the Muslims could see that it can undermine their own political and economic interests also because uh, Christians could decide to align themselves with a Christian candidate from the South and have him elected into some offices. So uh, this could be there. There are other reasons that might have informed this kind of uh, uh, unhealthy activities that we see uh, on their own part. But there could be religious, some of them are religious, some of them are social and other dimensions of life. In your opinion, um, do you think that there is some uh, connection between Boko Haram and um, the Fulani herdsmen? They are both of the same further one will say. Uh, there is really a great connection and I will not be surprised if they share a lot in common in terms of uh, strategies and how they carry, conduct their attacks because the attacks of Boko Haram in Meduguri area is almost the same kind of attacks that you find 
uh, taking place uh, within the southern part of uh, Kaduna. So, and both of them are Muslim, or, or yeah, Muslim induced terrorist organizations. So, there is a lot in which they share uh, uh, together. Your Excellency, we have to ask where these weapons come from? Yeah, this is the question many of us are really asking. I cannot tell you exactly that this is where uh, the source of these weapons. But I want to believe that some very powerful and influential people within the society and uh, those who have the connection and the capacity to be able to import these weapons uh, and give it, put it in the hands of these people. Now, there are people like that, but this should be the work of the various security outfits that we have in Nigeria. But it is my belief that the ordinary carriers of these guns will not have one, the money to buy them and then to the connections to be able to import them into Nigeria. Somebody should be somewhere that is facilitating all these things for them. I think this is just the thing. But we hope that uh, as time goes on, the truth will eventually come out and those who are truly behind this thing uh, will be discovered. Can you explain us uh, what is the situation of uh, Sharia law in your territory? Uh, I know that um, 13 states, if I'm not mistaken, 12 states, 12 states. Uh, in northern Nigeria, they, yes. they live under Sharia law. What does this mean? Well, uh, it means there are two different laws. You have the common law, which is supposed to serve every Nigerian. And then you also have the Islamic law, which uh, is being applied separately only for Muslims. Some of us have been against it, and we see this as a recipe for chaos and confusion within the country. Uh, there is great need for Nigeria to have a single legal system and this legal system shall uh, draw its strength from the various cultures and traditions of uh, the diverse people of Nigeria. But uh, there should be cultures that uh, Muslims, Christians, animists, people of other religions can identify with so that there will be uh, a kind of um, uniformity when it comes to the application of the law. Uh, but unfortunately, the agitation for Sharia has always been there. And uh, 12 states have arrogated to themselves the power to a kind of uh, established the Sharia law and uh, we have seen the way it is being used. Very often, if there is a conflict between a Christian and a Muslim and it is taken there, surely the Muslim will always have an upper hand. But this is one of the painful realities that we have to face ourselves in Nigeria today, having to live with uh, a dual kind of an ideology um, of the common law and also the Islamic law. Your Excellency, I want you to take the opportunity to tell to our audience, to our viewers, uh, how do you feel about this? What do you want them to know? The, the media barely covers uh, information about this uh, terrorist group, Fulani. I mean, we know, we hear about Boko Haram, um, Al-Shabaab in, in uh, Kenya, um, Seleka in Central African Republic. Fulani, it's not, you know, a term that we all identify with, with uh, terrorist activities. 
If you can say something about this, what, what is your message? Really, and this is what has been quite worrying to us, that uh, the atrocities of this dangerous group have not succeeded in catching uh, and attracting the attention of the world. Uh, but a lot of evil is going on. Uh, the kind of deaths that are being recorded, uh, as I have given the figures, um, over 800 people killed within a period of three months. Uh, this fits into the definition of uh, genocide or some kind of uh, abu great, great abuse of human rights uh, that one people can talk about. So it is a very serious matter and we are worried that um, this issue is not given the kind of publicity that it should be given. Uh, and yet, the atrocities are going on, the, the, the killings are going on, uh, the displacement of people is going on. And uh, this is something that the world has to uh, really look into. And I feel also that if the lessons that we have seen in one time flourishing Christian countries, and today they are not, is anything to go by, then there is need also for the church to take some serious action, either by way of advocacy and others, to see that this spate of violence which is happening uh, in northern Nigeria, that there is a way in which it is brought to a halt, else um, it is going to undermine the growth and the development of the church in northern Nigeria. Your Excellency, are you afraid? Do you fear for your life, talking like this? You know, by accepting to become a priest and uh, serving the Lord the way in which one is doing, already one has put his life on the line. And um, so we are ready for uh, whatever happens. What we try to do is to see that the truth on what is happening is proclaimed. And uh, we will continue to present this truth. But um, God will, God has always given the grace and uh, we shall continue to forge ahead until such a time that the needed peace and understanding which we all desire among the diverse people of our country is realized. Definitely we are worried with this state of uh, lack of um, understanding among ourselves. And it's not as if we want it, but it's a, it's a very terrible situation that here you are, you want peace, you want to live in peace with your neighbors, but your neighbors feel you don't deserve to be, to live in peace, you don't deserve to be left alone. And uh, these are all the challenges that, you know, we face, which uh, make it very, very difficult for us. Like, you are saying, I want to live in peace with the other person. But that person is saying, he doesn't see any reason to live in peace with you uh, unless you become like him or you become like her. And that makes things really difficult. Your Excellency, I would like to finish our conversation with um, a message of hope. In all these difficulties, your people, the people that you care for, you as pastor, as shepherd of, of your um, people, you see um, light, you see hints of hope in them? Well, as a Christian, yes, um, there is hope. But the indicators are very frightening. 
you know, the indicators are quite frightening because it's like here is the church preaching nonviolence, preaching love, preaching mercy, but you find another group of people that all they are concerned is how to exterminate and undermine uh, your being. That we are to live with this is a very serious problem, but we believe that God who has allowed this to happen uh, knows how he is going to resolve this matter and uh, Nigerians will be able to work together and pursue common objectives and uh, leave behind them all the things that uh, are causing divisions and creating disaffection and differences uh, among ourselves. This is what we are praying for. We hope for a better Nigeria, we hope for a better country. How that is going to be, it is all dependent on the efforts in which we put into building that kind of our dream society and what God is able to do to help bring this about in our midst. Your Excellency, thank you very, very much for uh, sharing this time with us. Thank you very much, and I appreciate this great opportunity. Thank you. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us in another program of Where God Weeps. If you want to know more about the situation of Nigeria and the work that the Church is doing in this African country, we encourage you to contact the information at the end of this program. Thank you, and God bless.